Hello and welcome to the Poly Attempted Picture Class podcast video segments. We had to do it separately since I don't know how to use recording equipment accurately. Yay! But uh, we're going to focus mostly on the films because we're a picture class podcast. Psycho came out in 1959. A year later it was turned into Psycho. We worked out the book, so I'm going to let you say the plot. Because we forgot, I forgot so much stuff in the podcast, so let's go, <laughs> let's go quickly for our first one, which came out in 1960. 1960, Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock directed, mm-hmm. starring Anthony Perkins, as Norman Bates, a hotel manager, um, there he is in, in spoiler alert, look at his dress, <laughs> he, um, he's running a hotel, um, the movie starts in a bank. Right? Did we mm. figure that out yet? Uh, it starts in the hotel room, and then... Well, I mean, I mean, sorry, the business part. The business that? part, I think it's a real estate thing. Real estate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a real estate. All right, so it starts with a couple uh, being together. Being together. And uh, then moves... They're, they're both financially strapped. Yes. So they set up the characters, and then he's paying alimony, but he wants to be married to her, and that's kind of like they don't have enough money, so it's a very relatable plot. Yes. Even even sixty years later. Yeah. So they they go to the yeah, yeah the, the, they go uh, so they, they go they they plan to meet up again. Uh, she goes to work. Yeah, she goes then, to work. with she? Uh, she's with Alfred Hitchcock's daughter actually. Yeah. And then Alfred Hitchcock cameo uh, in that scene. Mm-hmm. He comes really early on. And then uh, the boss, a very big investor, comes down with a large cash down payment. Yes. I think. And she needs to bring it to the bank. She's in charge of putting it to yeah. the bank, and then she goes home because she's not feeling well. Because yeah. he was flirting with her very hard, and it was very inappropriate, but she handled it very well. And then uh, she went to the hotel room and yeah. decided to go for it. She wants to take the money, and she's going to go. Right. And um, then she falls asleep at the side of a road. Right. Cop introduces, says, where are you going? And then she's acting suspicious, paranoid. Goes, changes cars, buys a new car, and yeah. keeps running and running, and then winds up at the Bates Motel. And that's forty minutes of the movie. Yeah. So uh, it, it's it's a great movie, but at the same time, uh, it's an exercise in patience. Yeah, she, Mary yeah. Marion Crane is her character's name. She's mm-hmm. she's the star of the movie. She's the, so far she's the star of the movie. She's going to take this money and start a new life, life and. Goes to this innocuous hotel on the side of the road um, to kind of Bates get away from Motel. everything, and mm-hmm. it's nice, quiet. It's the Bates Motel. Um, she gets the first room, which is room one, which is right next to the office yeah. that the proprietor stays at, and she goes in into her take a shower, and he pulls a a picture off. Oh, you can't see it, but there's a picture off the wall, and there's a peephole, and he's watching her in the shower and something happens and a woman barges into the hotel room with a knife and stabs Marion Crane. One of the best edited scenes of all time. Yeah, it's very, very hard cut. It holds up. It holds up. It's black and white so you don't see the blood, the red blood. It's chocolate syrup actually. Chocolate syrup, yeah. Chocolate syrup. Just like Night of the Living Dead. Mm -hmm. Look good on on film in black and white. so uh, then the main character is now uh, dead and laying in a pool in a bath in a running shower in a hotel room, and Norman comes walking in and screams, "Oh my God, Mother, what did you do?" And has to clean up the room. Mm-hmm. All right, so we were talking are we going to talk about two? Are we going to break down two a little? Yeah, bit? let's break down two because we were spoiler alert. Alert. We're spoiling the shit out of this one. Yeah, watch it and then come back and come watch you can it. hear our commentary. On okay. It. Covered. Let's let's go into this. So, so twenty two years later, Norman Bates did not go to jail. Norman Bates went to an asylum where he was. Or I guess mm-hmm. back then it would have been an asylum. Now they would call it a mental, mental health, health institution, institution. Um, to get rehabbed, and they deem him fine, healed, cured. Mm-hmm. They say that they actually ready to go, it. ready to go back into society. So they go to release him at the courthouse where the hearing is, and uh, Lila. Uh, Lila Loomis. Lila Loomis, now, now Sam Loomis, Loomis, who married yeah. Sam Loomis from the first movie, he's there to greet him, to tell him that he doesn't deserve to be out. She killed her sister, and... He killed her. I'm sorry, he killed her. 
Oh, she. Yeah, that's more, true. Huh? Depending well, who. You, that's well, depending on how you want to word it. Okay. Semantics, but okay. yeah, no. Norman Norma Bates killed her sister, and he deserves to be locked up for life. And everybody, very super supportive in this town. Yes, thinks he deserves a second chance. He did his time. He did his rehab. He he should not be uh, frowned upon for being out in the you know the general populace again. Mm -hmm. Um, Excellent cast. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, everybody, Excellent everybody was well cast. Top notch. He gets out, um, starts seeing. Oh, we're, we're doing a quick here, yeah, right? Yeah, let's do quick. Yeah. So he starts yeah, seeing notes. remnants of notes from his mother popping up, and and uh, he, he sees the hotel turn into kind of an hotel motel, um, run by Dennis Franz, gloriously mm -hmm. as a sleazy Forty Second Street in the oh, early eighties. Yeah. Style Brian De Palma, Dennis France, yeah, like sleaze ball, sleazy, 100%. gross, like four hour blocks, Oof. cheat on your wife, Oof. shoot up some heroin, yeah, type of much. hotel. That's what they show, yeah. Norman, you know, true blue, pure 1960s spirit, fires him immediately, doesn't want the hotel to be a, a drug den, sex den. Yeah, uh, Dennis France, so he, he Norman ends up getting a job, part of his rehab at a local diner, mm -hmm. helping prep food. Uh, probably a good reason to put a knife in his hand so he could chop tomatoes and, and lettuce and whatnot. And, and the yeah. object of his murder would be in his hand. Yes. But that's an actual tool. Yeah. And, uh, Rehabilitation. Yeah, Dennis Franz walks in and starts giving him a hard time mm -hmm. and yelling at him and sees the knife sitting there and he's like, come on, psycho, which the yep. first time the word psycho was, yep. was uttered Utter. in, the, in the series. Um, and there's, you know, the knife, the similar knife is sitting in the cake, but he... Yeah, Norman rehabbed, mm -hmm. holds holds tight, holds fast, doesn't yeah. doesn't jump, and uh, yeah, you can take over. Uh, yeah. So uh, during this time, oh, uh, Meg Tilly. Yeah, Meg Tilly, Mary, Mary, uh, who he meets at the diner. She's very, um, she's very nice, but she's gone through struggles, and she's pretty much set up to for Norman to fall in love with. It seems when you watch it a second time, like oh, it's very intentional. Uh, halfway through the movie, you learn that Mary and Lila are mother and daughter. So this is Samuel and Lila Loomis's child. Now, the weird thing is that if Lila Loomis is so unhappy, it's just like she lost her husband and she has a kid, you know, she yeah. got... If, if it wasn't for her sister's murder, she wouldn't have her daughter. That's true. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. And then she's, she's hell-bent on making him suffer yeah. to the point where there's another killer and... You think it's Norman Bates the whole movie, and it's not. That's the spoiler, and that's why I think it's a great movie. Yes. It's a Norman Bates character piece where he's just a good human being yeah. trying, and like he's, he's not a good human being, but it's just like you oh. understand the abuse and its second chances, and mm -hmm. isn't that kind of ideally the thing you want? Yeah, that's the point. It's like a post cancel culture Norman. Like he's coming back, and he has some support, but. There's this one per woman who just really making his life hell, and then where everything untangles at the end, it's so well written because you understand like his lawyer, his uh, his therapist is one of my favorite characters, yeah. Robert Loja, yeah. uh, sees Mary dressed as his mother, and he's like, aha, I knew it was you. So he grabs her, and she doesn't know who he is, so she stabs him. He falls down in that very uncomfortable stab, mm -hmm. and then the police come. They think Mary is Norman. They shoot her down because there were murders yep. and everything's very nicely tied up narratively but it's like convenient yep. but it's like convenient for Norman and I'm like yeah that kind of shit would happen yep. and uh, so we finish and then we have another expositional dump yeah. why it wasn't any of them it was Emma Spool who was the aunt which okay it works but also mm -hmm. he needed to kill her in order for Psycho 3 to happen that's yes it was just like I guess he was like okay Actually, from a from a slasher standpoint, yeah, it's I, a great kill. Yeah, he he goes up behind her with a, a full shovel and just, and just her. clangs no her across no the back cut. of the head. And, no cut. It was horrible. And the sounds perfect and and he made yeah. her the poison tea too. Yeah, so he she, killed, she, yeah, she was gone either way. And I think the shock of him having to deal with her, she was watching out for him, but it's just yeah. like he seeing her pushed her in well they again. needed to make her another they needed another mother character and that and she fit the and the I, role. and he that became she, the new body she, yeah she became the new woman in this window oh yeah, yeah. That, and if it ended any differently like you know but at the same time i liked 
Yeah, that could make him go um, back because, oh great, I got over the fact I killed my mother. Oh, I didn't kill my mother. Mm -hmm. So it just retreaded. So he just basically did it. Uh, Psycho 3. To set up Psycho 3. Psycho 3, which picks up a few weeks later, but we focus on... It was, uh, Anthony Perkins directed this one. Yes, Star Trek and, Cinder, uh, I call yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he's just out being Mom. Psycho again. Yes. Yeah, so... Bates again. We're introduced to a nun or a former nun. Oh yeah, nun. we should start from there. Yeah, that's why it, that's oh. that's what's weird about three. Every time it begins with "There is no God" over black screen, yeah. and then, and then uh, a woman, a nun who's lost her faith, lost her way, lost, her lost soul. yeah, is just gonna end it because her life is now meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, two nuns run. She was gonna jump to mm -hmm. her death off of a like a bell tower. Two nuns run up to, to stop her. Yeah. One uh, a little so, so like, and really like, aggressively, one more sweetly. One. Yeah. And then the nice one gets knocked over. Yeah, while they're fighting, yeah. the the nicer one gets The nicer killed. one gets killed because of the mad one's aggression, but yes. then she blames her for killing herself and then yes. vanishes her. Yeah. So instead of yeah, becoming a thing. Not, not our, that the shirt oh, our favorite poster. It is our favorite poster. Of the series. And booby box. Yes. He uh so she, instead of going to jail because it was a, an act of God, the church likes covering things up, but uh, they she uh, just dis she, they just kind of kick her out. So and she's, she's, on the side of the road she's walking suitcase. down the road with her suitcase and uh, Jeff Fahey, who... Mm -hmm. From I, Lost, uh, yeah. From Lost, yeah, comes cruising by, a sleazy looking mid-80s guitar player. Yeah. Guitar player almost a 90s. Singer song. Almost, almost 90s. 90s. He's, 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 he's very he was, late 80s. He was going to bridge that gap if, yeah. if, if things went differently. Very much. He, so. he picks her up. Uh, it was starting to rain, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, she gets in the car and he tries to get her to uh, thank him for the ride aggressively mm -hmm. and she pushes him away and ends up getting kicked out of the car. He cruises forward, hits, hits the Bates Motel. They're hiring because Dennis Franz had gotten fired in the last movie. Good continuity, I like this. Yeah, good continuity. Yeah, was, this takes, good this continuity. picks right up where the last one left. Three years later, but they didn't lose a beat. Yeah, they didn't lose a beat. I mean, directionally. Yeah. Tonally, it's different. But yeah. Well, yeah, as far as this. But the, the universe. The continuity got, of the story. They got it yeah. fantastic. So he gets a job uh, at the hotel because he needs money to get his car to go to Los Angeles to his, his uh, yep. singing career to take off. And. Uh, He's working and uh, Mary, not uh, Mary, uh, Marine is her name, the nun. Marine. Uh, she gets to the hotel and sees him working there and is kind of disgusted. Uh, he, he puts her in the first room, which was the kill room from. Is that gonna, no. Uh, uh, the kill room from the first movie. Um, Norman Caesar, she's got short blonde hair, she's yeah. got the same initials as Marion Crane. So it's another long story on her this, suitcase. Yeah. So he uh, he goes, "Why would you put her in the first room?" And he shows that mm -hmm. the peephole was still there, and he's watching her. And then you go from here. Uh, so that you know, uh, they begin the, the love story kind of develops, and it kind of becomes a little. This is where the movie gets messy because there's a party going on, right? Yeah, they, they, they kind of have a, yeah, they kind of start falling for each other. He takes her to that dining, they go to a restaurant. Yep, and then. Where it's all old people. And they, um, during that, while well, that's going on, Jeff, but he rents out kind of sleazy, right, to people? Or oh, it was a, a tailgate party. A tail, but he like rents Like a group of people who are going to a football game. That's like a large party. Who have movie, a pretty yeah. big party, yeah, they're having a big tailgate party at this hotel. And that's where most of the kills you're going to get. Yeah, then, and then. Norman. Norman, Norma. Norman, exactly. yeah, comes in and he sees attractive women, yeah. uh, either that Jeff Fahey oh, yeah, in he, his weird lamp yeah, it was a little, dance. Some neon colors and weird some, lighting. And, and they did that. And then after the um, they, the phone booth kill, which was our... So, yeah, Jeff Fahey took, out, picked up a girl, kicks her out. does his business with her, flashes some purple weird lamp lighting. <laughs> Tosses her out uh, after she, he's done with her. Uh, she gets mad. She's in underwear, and he gives her a, sticks a five in her underwear to buy a cab. Throws her clothes out on the floor. I guess uh, Norma Bates was watching this from a distance. She gets dressed real quick. Doesn't make no sense, but <laughs> no, yeah, she gets dressed real quick. Goes into a Superman style phone booth. phone booth that's just literally in the middle of the parking lot, which is yeah. it makes no sense, and, but and it's it's a good shot. 
Mama Bates comes flying in and smashes the glass, stabs her. You see her feet stepping all over the broken very glass. Very jello, very Very jello, very, yeah, very argento. Um, it's a bloodbath. Yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, of course, Anthony Parker, yeah. Norman Bates comes around the corner, sees the mess, Cleaned has to up. clean it up. That's his, his MO. It's clean up behind Mother. Mm -hmm. And then, they yeah, more people in the tailgate party get killed. Girl yeah. gets killed on the toilet. Yeah, uh, she was a director of Strip to Kill. Yeah. Uh, no relation. Um, <laughs> spelled differently, too. And, oh, so, um, yeah, uh, it was, it ends eventually, I think, Barrett. Mm, Marine? Marine is the, yeah, so they, she's, killed, she's trying to right? get, with yeah, yeah. Norman, she's trying to get with Norman and he's struggling. And that, with that triggers Mama Bates to come out. And Jeff, he just goes nuts and steals. Oh, his, that's course. right. Yeah. So yeah, he said so he finds the body. He calls Norman and he goes, I could go to the police, but what are they going to do? They'll pat me on the back. You can sell this property and give me the money. And he was basically going to try and blackmail Yeah, me. it was a, not a bad plot. That yeah, was I mean, a good like, idea. And yeah, then, Jeff Fahey is like, but uh, he just like, he looks so just different. Like yeah. he looks like he... He lost it a little bit. Yeah, yeah I don't know how though. Like they don't really Yeah, they didn't really... And then he meets a reporter. Like he finds oh, yeah, out. Yeah, 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 the reporter kind of filled him in on And then he figures it out. And then I... Yeah, he winds up with the guitar. Oh, his whole line was, don't mess with the guitar. Mm -hmm. And then Norman takes the guitar and hits him over the head with it. That was a very songs. fan service moment. Yeah, it was yeah, a very good, like... It was, was a good callback. When you see the asshole get it, it's yeah. like the, the Halloween 4 father getting yeah. it. Like, it's oh, yeah. Good. And then uh, they kind of wrap that up with Marine, right? Like, yeah. And then he gets arrested. And yes, he, he gets arrested at the end of sheriff, everyone, everyone really saying like how disappointed yeah. they are that even though it was to no fault of his own was pushed back into the situation yeah, by uh, the he, previous movie but he ended up yeah, everybody who was rooting for him is now kind of and feels then, like they were taken advantage of and the movie kind of ends with the uh, similar to the first one with he's, the sitting in the, he's sitting in the back of a police car and then everything goes black they call it like the diploma ending like carry yeah, you just see his face staring and that's your theatrical trilogy uh however important prequel slash sequel slash oops uh showtime video uh, written by Joseph Stefano, directed by Mick, uh, Mick, Rat Mick Harris. Mick Harris, I can say names, no problem. But uh, this one is a surprisingly very underrated, but also very, very well done. John loves this movie. So I do like this movie a lot. Tell me about it. So, CCH. CCH Pounder. CCH Pounder is a radio show host who does a show about serial killers, and she's her topic of the night is matricide and killing your mother mm -hmm. and she has a, a guy and his doctor on who, who had killed his mother and they were trying to get his you know view of how it happened and how it worked out and norman calls in under an assumed name and he says he knows a thing or two about it and he intertwined he him calling the show and them flashing back to Olivia Hussey as Norma Bates and uh, Henry Thomas as young Norma Bates. Henry Thomas from the Hill House, E.T. E. among other things. Olivia Hussey was in uh, Chris, uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, yeah, Black, Black, Black Christmas, Christmas. Sorry, too many Christmas horror. Too many Christmas. Sorry, yeah, uh, Black Christmas and and even the sixties Romeo and Juliet, all good movies. Pretty mm -hmm. much all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows how she was sexually abusive towards him. They really hit that one. Yeah, they hit it almost a little too too good. Um, and they don't hold back in terms of like... Yeah, they show a lot of her kind of rubbing up on him or him having him... Like, it's not explicit, but... In terms not explicit, of, but you can tell, especially for a younger, for a teenager... Oh, yeah, 19 Who's minutes, kind of yeah, repressed, mm -hmm. and this would have been in the 50s. Um, oh, yeah. So it definitely was uh, taking all that into account. You could definitely see where... She was ramping up his sexuality to a degree, and then when he would get excited, she would, she would slam him yeah. into a closet, or she'd smear makeup on him and put a dress on him and lock him away for a while, and really pushed him to, you know, pushed him they, to they, they wanted, he, she kept him sexually repressed unless she would get him going, and then, I don't know how to describe it better, and then she would punish him for it. And they were trying, they thought, he might be Norman Bates. They pieced it together, the mm -hmm. CCH pounder. 
and the doctor, so, and we talked about this, you figure it'd be better to explain this, right? <laughs> so she, um, so he finally comes out on the phone, Norman. So current Norman is in a suburban 1990. No longer by place um, hotel. Yeah, no, no just hotel. Just He's just in a regular kitchen, cooking dinner. Regular development, cooking. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing very unassuming. He's passing the time by cooking. And yeah, he's cooking and his wife's calling him. It's his birthday. Apparently, he's getting a birthday cake. Yeah. And he's calling on this radio show. And finally, he lets out that he is Norman Bates and that he's going to have to kill again. Chris, Chris. And they... His wife's pregnant. And then it comes out that his wife's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And he did not want his wife to get pregnant because he sees himself as a, a demon seed and he wanted the bloodline to end... With, with him. him and she was a nurse so she fell yeah uh, like Lawrence Mary yeah Day she fell her. yeah she she fell for him while he was in, in Norman in gets a lot of lovers he does Norman does pretty well uh, of all the of all the uh, the Mount Rushmore you would say you know, uh, for, Freddy Krueger Jason and uh, Michael Marshall they don't have love interests so yeah. Norman Bates it's like he it's and two, you want him to kind of him and Mike yeah you're rooting good. for him more than your usual killer and well it's like yeah I think too that's why like we like too it's like he like three, but still you want him to get better. You do want him to yeah, get you better. Don't want him. And uh, you get frustrated. That's why I think it's kind of cool yeah. based on all the BS he has to deal with. And that's why I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a great franchise. Uh, there is, we don't, as you can see, Psycho 1998 with Vince Vaughn is not uh, represented on the VHS. Yeah. Uh, no. It's a shot for shot remake. It has its place, it was made. Um, I don't know what the one stars is Norman Bates. Yeah, I, I don't know what the point. Is. Yeah, it was. He made it. He said he made it so no one else would have to. So I guess. Yeah. Good job. Well, did he know we'd have six Batman's and five Spider Man's in six years yeah. in the in the twenty twenties? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> right after, so this uh, right after Good Will Hunting, and then um, also Psychos. I wrote Steve Soderbergh did a. Uh, uh, he cut up this one and the nineteen sixty and juxtaposed them as one cohesive movie with scenes from both made it black and white no no rhyme or reason he said it's probably unethical and illegal but he's like okay uh then we had the television the the, the i'm gonna let you take this one do, want me to do it again yeah, i need you to do it again oh we gotta do it again all right we're gonna do it again it was great the first Wait, time. let me grab my notebook. notebook just make sure i don't miss anything so they made a pilot for a tv show uh it was on abc i believe um, in 1987, 1987. or NBC, that doesn't matter. No, no <laughs> it was on no watching. channel because nobody watched it. Um, so it's called Bates Motel. Uh, Norman is in his asylum. Uh, Bud Court plays a character named Alex West. Bud Court is a younger. He, he killed his father as a young as a teenager and gets put in the same asylum with Norman. And they think because they have a similar reason for being there that they might get along well, so they kind of pair them together. Father-son type relationship kind of develops. Um, Bud Court gets out, Norman Bates dies. Uh, Norman, in a total 80s will-reading scene, uh, they bequeath his belongings to different people and, and, and Alex gets the motel and the house. So uh, they go to the cemetery for, for Norman's uh, yeah, burial, and there's a woman in a flowing, in an all black ensemble off in the distance. Nobody sees her but him somehow. And he goes, Did you see her? And everyone's like, Nah, it's just somebody, you know, a widow or something. Don't worry about it. So he goes back to the hotel, runs into Lori Petty, who's playing a character named Willie, who's we don't really know, squatting maybe. She's wearing like a chicken, a chicken suit or a bird suit, like a, a mascot suit. It says, kind of like this actually. It kind of like that. Kind of like this. Um, that's, that's good. So, time. so he goes, he goes to the bank. The bank goes, we'd love to buy this property so we can develop it. And he goes, no, no. Norman wants me to have the, the hotel. He wants me to open the hotel. He's carrying around Norman's ashes in an urn, which he keeps talking to, which is weird that's a character um, quirk so he gets he gets basically a really basically the the race stands loan on the ghostbusters firehouse uh equivalent deal um so he, so they have a very terrible montage of them building rebuilding the hotel from it was in pretty dilapidated shape 
and they're mixing cement and hammering nails to a very, almost a, a placeholder music, which they probably couldn't get the money to get like a real song, like mm -hmm. a Rocky and Hearts on Fire or whatever. Um, so they build the hotel up. Lori Petty now is a chef and she's gonna cook at the cafe they built. So there, there's a party, all the greasers are at it, but, but Cord is hosting it. Uh, he tells Lori Petty he owes the bank money. Meanwhile, they cut to the Cabin 12 woman who hasn't been mentioned in a while and she's in a bathtub with a suicide note written on, mm -hmm. on the mirror and uh, she's holding a switchblade and one of the random girls kind of walks in and she goes, oh, I thought this was my room. And she throws the knife down real quick and she gets out and puts a towel on and she's like, oh, come on, you gotta come to the party. And she's like, no. And she's like, come on, it'll be fun. And she's like, no. I've been divorced three times and I'm miserable and I gotta get out of here. And and she's like, no, it'll be fun. You know, have it, come dance, you're beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And drags her to the party. She, yeah, she gets dressed. Uh, she's dancing around a little bit. It seems like she's having a good time. She goes, I gotta introduce my friend. She, he's a writer and Jason Bateman, <laughs> why not? Comes walking in and he starts dancing with her. They share a moment, he goes to kiss her. I don't know if he landed it or not. And she's like, oh, you're so young and I'm older and you know, I can't do this. And Jason Bateman gets mad and leaves and she follows him and the whole same old, oh, you need to live and, and things aren't that bad and this and that. and. She comes to the realization that she probably shouldn't kill herself and uh, goes back to her room and that same girl that randomly walked in. This is still Bates Motel, by the way. This same- uh, The first one. The same girl that walks in, walks in again, even though the door's locked and bolted. And she goes, no, you need to- Live. Yeah, you definitely need to live. And she opens the door and they're all sitting outside in their 1960s cars. And they say, they all start announcing their name and what year they killed themselves. And they're like, we're all, we're suicide victims and you definitely need to survive and not kill yourself. And this is still Bates Motel. This is a three part episode. Yeah, so, so, so that happens. And then, uh, let me get back to where I was here. So they go back and uh, you see a, Mama Bates sitting in the window of the Bates house, rocking in the chair, but Court goes running in. Norma Bates comes screaming down the stairs with a knife and yelling, get out of my house. He's like, you're not real. She gets tackled, takes the mask off a la Scooby-Doo and says, oh my God, you're the guy from the bank. And he goes, yeah, I would have got away with it if it wasn't for you metal. I didn't say that, but he, he might as well have. Yeah. And he goes, they go, oh, you're just trying to get, you know, take advantage. He goes, what are they going to arrest me for wearing a dress? So another Norma Bates comes running in with a knife and the skull and all that stuff. And he pretty much confesses the, this is real. confesses his whole scheme and takes the mask off. It's Lori Petty now. And she's got a little handheld tape recorder. And she goes, I recorded the whole thing. How could she have heard it from the other one? Dude. Uh, so, I don't know. So that happens. He he goes to jail, and Bud Court is now sitting outside of the Bates Motel, and he says, if you guys ever need a room, come to the Bates Motel. That's and it was promptly canceled. That, that, that's a pilot. That was an hour and 45 minutes of my life that I'll never have back. You split it between two days, though. I did split it between two days. And then uh, finally, we got, Where are we? We got Bates Motel, the second show. Uh, the show. The show. 2013 to 2017. Five episodes, 50. No, 50 episodes, five seasons. Um, neither of us finished it. Uh, different reasons that we weren't interested is because Psycho 4 kind of covered the beginning. Yeah, I thought and Psycho 4 did. I thought it was more efficient and uh, just. Uh, it's very well done, I guess. It's had a good budget. It's yeah, just. People liked it. Some of the, the the expansion characters and the expanded broke, uh, Breaking expanded Badness, universe. I was just like, I, I don't know. Yeah, they kind of had to... Didn't resonate. You couldn't just have people going in and out of hotels, so they had to come up with side stories yeah. for all these people. It was like OC-based. Like, that's like, they kind of wanted to make it a hit. And it was A&E, of all channels. Was 2013, yeah. So A&E going for a different market, but yeah, they, they, they... The they main made. of all those teen high school shows yeah, yeah, that were big at the time. Right? That's where the cool kids go. Arts and entertainment. Yes. That's what that actually stands for. 
fun fact. Uh, yeah, that's the Psycho franchise. So uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, we're trying different things here. But we, we, we tried and... Uh, Can I say that if, I would like more Psycho merch? If anybody from Universal watches, I've been sitting on one action figure for 20 years. So if, it'd be kind of cool if they had like Mary, if they had something like a series. Yeah, or even a regular Norman Bates without the dress, and then a one you could dress up. Or... And the poster is Psycho Two, but it's just a Psycho. Yeah, because Psycho Two has like the most iconic poster because the original Psycho poster was. What it was just it was her screaming with the blood. It was like oh yeah, just her screaming. Yeah, that's not the poster. It's no, that's so, so that's similar. one of the VHS posters, and. If you notice, the, a lot of the posters that you like sometimes, they're copyrighted, so they don't even have the rights to them. And the streaming you saw, like, it was either something else, but I like this. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to come back with something real soon.